ծանցության եւ ծանր բահերին քեզ եմ հիշում դույմ վահանես իսկ ես քովեկան հաղթանակի Good afternoon. It's great to be here with you today to share these few moments together to share this message with you. Let's begin by proclaiming our faith in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In this installment of Armenian Christianity today, I want to talk about preparedness. Before each major feast day in the Armenian Church, there is a what is called a paregentan. means a day of good living and today happens to be one of them because next week is one of the five major feast days of the Armenian church the paregentan is a day of good living preparing us for the major feast now you say what are these five major feasts well let, let's review those two of them of course the ultimate major feast days in the life of our lord one of them is his birth in other words the nativity christmas that's one of the feast days the other one is easter of course without easter it was just another birth so with easter we celebrate the glorious the awesome victory over death the victory that our lord jesus christ had and promises to all of us resurrection over life easter sunday that's two of them directly related to the life of our lord There's one called the transfiguration which we had a few weeks ago the transfiguration is when Christ reveals his divinity when he transfigures amidst the apostles and there is of course the feast of the holy cross which comes up in September the feast of the holy cross the the elevation of the holy cross there are four feasts about the holy cross but the ultimate one the elevation that's one of the five major feast days so we counted them Christmas, Easter, Transfiguration and Holy Cross. What is the fifth one? It is the one that comes up next Sunday. It is the feast of the Assumption of the Holy Virgin Mary of the Holy Astvadzadzin. And we'll talk more about that next week, but today I wanted to share with you this idea of preparedness, preparing ourselves for the major feast. You see in life and when we talk about Christianity today Armenian Christianity today life goes by so quickly and sometimes it goes by so quickly that when we talk about it we think we're talking in terms of clichés life went by oh close your eyes and it's gone by but truly we are in fast gear if you look all around you the rate at which information is being pumped out at us we call this the era of big data we just saw that uh, you know there was uh, all kinds of scandals that were released re- revealed how government was spying on us and taking a look at the data that we provide think about that for a moment every time you turn on your smartphone every time you look up somebody every time you click on a link on a website there is data that is being processed and this data is in the hands of so many people who want to market to you and because they want to market different items to you what kind of glasses what kind of books you're going to be reading these are these are there there's incredible price tags that are put upon this data and because there's price tags guess what people want to sift through data faster and guess who gets <laughs> guess who gets to go along in the flow you and me life is going by it is going faster and faster people trying to make money people trying to harvest data trying to get it and you and i are the people that are providing that to all of these companies now whether you follow that uh, that reasoning or follow what i'm saying is secondary because you know it and you feel it day in and day out you get congested in traffic people trying to move people impatient on the streets on the corners inside your office inside your home in fact we're seeing elevations in issues of domestic difficulties because people are finding it finding less time to communicate less time to share less time to be at one with one another and really this time of preparedness why i'm talking about it today not on the feast but a one week before is that our church fathers give us an opportunity to prepare for these ultimate feasts 
We should take advantage of them because they're healthy. They're healthy things to do for us to slow down in our life and take a look at really what is life about? Why are we here? What are we doing? And in preparation for a specific feast day, for instance, the Astvadzadzin coming up, you look and you look at what is the message that comes to us from the feast of Astvadzadzin. Well, she is the mother of God. Our church fathers do not call her just Saint Mary or the Blessed Virgin. We call her Astvadz Adzin, meaning God, Astvadz Zin Zanel, the, the bearer of God, one who gave birth to God. You say, well, what, what does that mean? God cannot be born. Now, that's kind of awkward too, right? What do you mean, birth of God? Well, of course, we're referring to Jesus Christ, the divine, the divine who took human form. And so in those terms, we can understand that St. Mary becomes a very important instrument in that redemptive process. But what is unique about St. Mary is that she was flesh and bone. She was just like you and me. She had will. She was able to say yes or no to God, but she said yes to God. And that's really the challenge that we're going to be looking at next week when we, when we study uh, the the theophany in terms of what it means to be an Armenian Christian today. Today look at it as something coming up, something to prepare for. Are you prepared to say yes to God? God comes to us in many, many different ways throughout our life. Comes to us in our relationships, in the people that we love, the people that we care about, the people that have been entrusted to us. If you're a parent, you know what I mean? If you're a child, you know what I mean? Because you say, well, wait, no one's entrusted me with anything. Sure they have. They've entrusted you with the happiness, with the joy, to be able to share in the goodness that God has placed all around you. And as people were really invited this day and every day, actually, but this day in particular as a paregenton, as a day of preparedness, preparing for the feast, we are invited to really look at our life, look at the blessings that have been given us, take an inventory of those and understand how those blessings come to play out in our life. Our relationships, the difficulties, the challenges that we have. Hey, you know, take a look around you. I mean, every day you see more and more challenges. On a global level, we start talking about the situation taking place in Syria, the, the extreme deaths that we're seeing, the, the extreme toll on life. We start seeing the uprising in, in Egypt, throughout the Middle East. We see what's going on in some countries with dire, dire financial difficulties. And then we look right in our own backyard here in the United States, here in Canada. We see the problem with, um, with job securement. We see immigration issues taking place. And every day these come to us and they bombard us. Now guess who gets to work on these problems? No, not politicians. You know what a politician is? It's someone who plays, you guessed it, politics, who has to weigh out good and bad. Now you know what is the good. A good is life without war, right? Think about it. Before you answer, think about it. Life without war is good. So why do we keep throwing ourselves back into these war situations? Think about it. You know what is good to be able to work to feel good, to feel good about yourself, to find that happiness. So why are we always ending up in these unhappy situations? Because we rely on others rather than relying on what God has given us. God has given us life. And it is the gift of God that we need to rely on. The gift of life, that you and I have that potential. You and I have the potential to love, to take care, to enjoy, God, to enjoy God's gift to its fullest. Do we take advantage of that? Well, tragically, we don't. You see, throughout Holy Scripture, when you look at the demands that Jesus places on us, what does he say? He says, God has given you gifts. He's given you talents. And over and over and over again, he says, use those talents. Use those wisely. And in fact, the one thing that he condemns, he says, the real sin is when you don't use the gift of God. Do you remember that story of the the, the three men, the three servants who had the talent. 
One of them had a certain number of talents. Let's use dollars, for instance. He had like $500, and he took it, and he invested it, and he made $1,000. The other one had only $200. Yeah, things are unfair. Some people have. Some people have less. Took that $200, and he made $400 out of it. And these people were applauded. They were, Jesus said, good for them. They did good with their talents. But the third guy, well, he had like $100. He didn't even have as much as the other ones. He was scared to use that. So instead, what he did is he put it inside of a small handkerchief and kept it close to him. Probably put it in his pocket. And then later, when everyone was giving their accounting, one said, I've taken 500, made 1,000. One said, I took 200, made 400. This one said, hey, I was scared to spend it. Here's $100. Now think about it. He didn't do anything. That's the point. <laughs> People will look at that and say, well, good for him. He was smart. He didn't invest it in a volatile market. Jesus says, no, that's not smart. You've been given a life. And guess what? The market is always volatile. There's always a volatile market. And I'm not talking about Wall Street. I'm talking about life. Get out there. Risk it. Enjoy it. Love it. Don't be scared to love. And today, as a paregenton, as a day of preparedness, it's an opportunity for you to look at all the talents that are inside of your life, inventory them, and say, how can I use these to really further the cause of God, which is love? Not war. How can I use this to really bring about that lasting peace in this world? And I think when we start inventorying, when we start, uh, when we start to stop from our daily runaround and sometimes from the daily nonsense and really look inward, we see the presence of God waiting to be released. And I invite you this week, because next week as we prepare to see this, uh, th this feast day, greet this feast day, it's an opportunity for us to prepare ourselves this week, really to slow down, to look within. Now next week when we come, we'll be looking at the life of St. Mary, and I'm going to share with you next week something that you might not expect, the ultimate miracle, the ultimate miracle which begins with you and me. But until then, I want to remind you to always give praise and glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.